Hey folks, Journey Dude here, reporting from Edinburgh. Between deep fried Mars bar and endless backpack tunes, I stumble upon wee tiny mystery. Edinburgh tiny coffins. Because regular sized coffins are too mainstream, strap in, because it's about to get really weird. Amid Edinburgh castles and bustling streets, Arthur's seat sat proudly full of mystery and a dash of cheek. The old town loved its stories, especially the one about the quirky miniature coffins. Found nestled on Arthur's seat, were they the handiwork of bored druids, mini holiday homes for fairies, or remnants of a botched toy mafia deal? The new town, with its fancy facades, would often tease old town about living in the past. Got any more coffin tales? It's asked sarcastically. Old Town will retort, better coffins than body snatchers, newbie, referencing to notorious Burke and Hare. All this while, Arthur Seed beamed, knowing it held the city's juicy stories. Local writer Ian Rankin, always scribbling away, once ground after slipping in the mud. These coffins owe me a bestseller. Indeed, Arthur Seed wasn't just a hill. It was Edinburgh mischievous storyteller, guarding its secrets and sharing giggles with the wind. On a chilly day in June 1836, a group of young lads were gallivating around Arthur's seat. They weren't out on a simple stroll. Rumor had it that there was a treasure buried on that ancient volcano and they were determined to find it. Armed with a sense of adventure that will make Indiana Jones look lazy, they reach a small cave, hidden behind the slate slabs. To their astonishment, inside that cave wasn't a pot of gold, nor a dragon guarding precious gems. Instead, they found a neat stack of 17 tiny coffins, each holding an intricately carved wooden figure. Each figure was dressed handsomely, albeit early, in custom-made clothing. The scene was a perplexing blend of craftsmanship and macabre. Back in town, the news spread like a wild gem on toes. People were baffled. Theories mushroomed overnight. There are toys lost by wealthy child, one local insisted. Or offerings to the fairy gods, another speculated earning a few giggles. Mr. McTavish from the bakery even believed that they were failed prototypes of miniature storage solution for pies. But then, dark clouds rolled in and as the old tale of the body snatchers, work and hair re-emerged. The duo was infamous for murdering folks and then selling their bodies for medical research. The city has still reeling from their deeds. Was it possible that these miniature coffins was somehow connected to the horror stories of Edinburgh. Writers, always on the lookout for a juicy story, quickly latched onto this morbid theory. The miniature coffin represented a more tangible, albeit smaller link to the city's gruesome past. Some wrote tales linking the coffins directly to the number of Burke and Hare's victims, while others went down more speculative, supernatural path. Historians, on the other hand, scratched their heads. There was no concrete evidence to tie the miniature coffins to the murders duo, or any other theory for that matter. The coffins became a real-life mystery, part of Edinburgh folklore tapestry, whispered about in harsh tones of ghostly tours, or over a pint at the local tavern. Yet, no matter the theory, the city couldn't shake off the bewitching allure of the coffins. Were they tokens of remembrance, dark arts, or just quirky artistic endeavor? The answer remained as elusive as the Scottish mist. While the young treasure hunters didn't find gold that fateful day, they unearthed a tale that will be worth in weight in stories for centuries to come. Now, when you got a bunch of miniature coffins mysteriously stashed in a cave, you bound to spark wild speculations. Edinburgh folks, a queer kid bunch already, didn't disappoint. The tales surrounding these coffins span from the nationally mundane to the splendidly bonkers. Some theorize the coffins were witchcraft dolls, meant to curse or harm specific individuals. Maggie, a self-proclaimed witch and proud cat enthusiast, remarked, Clearly someone is trying to do a wee bit of dark magic. If only they asked me, I've told them they got the size wrong. Another claim was that sailors crafted them as protective charms before embarking on religious voyages. A sort of miniature life jacket, if you will. An interesting spin of the body statues theory proposed that a guilt-ridden associate of Burke and Hare made the dolls as a form of penance. Every doll symbolized a soul taken too soon, imagining a remorseful criminal carving each doll as a way to seek redemption. 
added a touch of gothic romance to the tale. Wait, there is more. Some declared them as a effigies to remember the Scottish soldiers who fell in the early 19th century wars. A miniature tribute to the brave hearts who didn't make it back home. And then there was the ever popular supernatural angle. Perhaps spirits of the otherworldly realm, annoyed by the human enroachments, left them behind as a warning. Or they were simple fairy furniture misplaced by some witchy kit. And of course, don't forget the conspiracy folks. They weren't mere coffins. Oh no. They were evidence of a secret society existence. Every door represented a member inducted into this arcane order. The coffins were basically miniature cult. Maybe this mysterious creator or creators was learning some personal laws, sending a message, or just a bored craftsman on a rainy day? The identity of this artist remained as enigmatic as the coffins themselves. Maybe it was a local with too much time on their hands. Or perhaps someone passing through, leaving behind a riddle wrapped in a tiny wooden enigma. All in all, the Arthur Seed coffins remained a real mystery continuing to tease and tantalize. Each theory adds a new layer to this legend. But whether they are symbols of grief, guilt, protection, or just plain old craftsmanship gone rogue, they've certainly carved out their spot in Edinburgh colorful lore. Ever walked into a museum expecting dusty relics, but instead find the very muse for your next bestseller? Well, that's exactly what happened to the renowned author Ian Rankin. Tucked away in Edinburgh corners were these wee coffins, and just like the Pied Piper's tune, Rankin couldn't resist their siren call. A museum staffer, probably with a mischievous twinkle, introduced Rankin to the little dolls. Rankin, with the detective's curiosity and writer's imagination, saw the coffins and thought, Aha! That is lying the backbone for my next thriller. And that's how they waltz into the Inspector Rebus novel, The Falls. As with most fascinating tales, the silver screen beckoned. The novel's TV adaptation saw replicas of the coffins make their acting debut. Those replicas later hobnob with other artifacts in the National Museum of Scotland. But the intrigue didn't stop at Rankin. Simon Ray, an artistic filmmaker, felt the same pull. He created a short video delving into the coffin's shadowy origins, nothing their power to tap into our primal fears. From books to films, these tiny coffins have managed to weave their mystic into modern storytelling, becoming iconic symbols of Edinburgh age-old mysteries. They are the perfect example how the smallest stories can last long shadow. The National Museum of Scotland, renowned for its troves of treasures and secrets, had seen countless artifacts come through its doors. But December 2014 was unique, even for them. The staff were used to handling age-old relics, but this? This was something straight out of mystery novel. A curious package arrived, unannounced, unexpected and downright mysterious. No festive Christmas, bro. Instead, it was plain and discreet. But its contents were anything but. Inside lay a replica of the very coffins that had kept Edinburgh tongues wagging for years. An impeccably craft replica, the miniature coffin was emblazoned with an even more bewildering title, 18. 17 coffins has been discovered in 1800s. So was this hit for the 18 one? Before anyone could play their best Sherlock impressions, another piece of the puzzle caught the eye. Attached to the coffin was a label, but this wasn't your standard museum information tag. No, this label whispered a quote, echoing from the pages of Robert Louis Stevenson's spine-chilling tale. The Body Snatchers, a story penned in 1884. It waved the eerie elements of the Burke and Hare saga into a narrative that straddled reality and supernatural. For those not in known, and shame on you if you are one of them, The Body Snatchers is a tale of medical students, grave robbing and the kind of twist ending that leaves readers sleeping with the lights on. Now, why would this replica coffin, this potential clue to an enduring mystery, be linked to Stevenson's tale? Was it a mere symbolic gesture, or was there more to unravel? The museum buzzed in the excitement and questions. 
Was this a clue from someone who knew more about the Arthur Seed coffins? A challenge for the museum to solve? Or perhaps just a plan of Stevenson's work trying to breed new life into an old tale? Whichever way you look at it, the package held mystery. Edinburgh Miniature Coffin Saga had just added another chapter and with it another layer of enigma. The tale of Arthur's feet, already steep in speculation and intrigue, now dense with the ghosts of fiction, blending the lines between fact and folklore, history and horror. Ah, Edinburgh, just when you think you got a grip on its mysteries, he throws a curveball, proving once again it's a city that never reveals all its secrets. Edinburgh with its cobbled streets and ancient whispers has a knack for keeping secrets, and the miniature coffins of Arthur Seed are no exception. Despite any speculations and the pop culture notes, the coffins remains an enigma wrapped in the riddle, inside a mystery. Perhaps it's the human tendency to seek patterns and stories in the unexplained. Or maybe the coffins truly hold a message from the past. Ritual lost in time. Whatever the reason, we can't deny their allure. They are testament to the power of unknown. In an age of information overload, where every riddle seems solvable with a quick Google search, the Arthur Seed coffins stand defiant. A reminder that some things are meant to stay a mystery. We delve deep into Edinburgh miniature coffin rabbit hole. But some tales, they resist a neat ending. Maybe it's a good thing because they are leaving something for our curiosity, leaving a dash of wonder in our otherwise explained world. Until our next time, please keep those curiosities burning and remember, not all stories are meant to be unboxed.